Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing well. Today, we are going to be reviewing... So, Rust. Rust is an iron oxide... Wait. No, 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 no. Bianca, not this Rust. Stupid. Ah, there we go. Thanks, Bianca. This is Rust. That's about it. In 30 seconds, I've basically showed you what Rust is about. Every clip that I've just shown you, I will now talk about in detail, uh, in somewhat in detail. The first clip we're gonna talk about is... Tree chopping. Tree chopping is one of the most important things in Rust, especially in the beginning and mid, uh, early game, mid game, a lot of tree chopping is needed. Uh, eventually you get a chainsaw and you realize, oh, tree chopping is super easy with a chainsaw. Also, you realize that once we've gone from mid to end game, you realize you won't need as much wood. And soon after that, in the late late game, it basically becomes non-existent, except for maybe some stairs that you didn't upgrade or stuff like that. Next. So base building is one of the key gameplay elements in Rust. It is essentially your house. Obviously, it's called your base. But I think what's different from Rust building and other survival building games is how much you can actually do with the buildings. You can have many different structures, wooden barricades, stone barricades, wooden high walls, stone high walls, bear traps, landmines, turrets. There is also a tool cupboard, otherwise known as TC in the Rust community which is basically a structure that prevents your base from decaying. Without the TC, your base will eventually fall apart. Time of decay depends on what the structure is. Some structures have longer decay times. Basically everything decays in Rust, even horses decay. They don't decay, they sort of die. Cars decay as well. Builds that are integral to your base, things like the foundation, the walls, the roofs, they can be upgraded four times. When you first place them, they're thatch, you upgrade them to wood, and you upgrade them to stone, upgrade them to metal, and then there's eventually HUM upgrade, which is high quality metal. Different build materials have different weaknesses and strengths. Wood is weak to fire, stone is not weak to fire, but is weak to explosives, and metal and HUM is weak to only explosives. If you use fire, it is completely immune. Next. Mining, just like tree cutting, one of the most important parts of rust. There are three types of ore, sulfur, metal, and stone. Most of them spawn in mountainy, hilly areas. Some may spawn in grasslands, but those aren't the big ore chunks. There are small ones that can be interacted with and grabbed from the floor. They look like tree stumps. The ores also spawn in the water, but you're gonna need a diving suit to get that. It's a pretty basic mining mechanic. You have ore chunks above ground on the surface, you mine them, smelt them, then you use them. There's no underground caves or anything like that, so that's all about it for mining. Next. Scavenging, another super important part of rust. You're gonna be doing this for the rest of your rust life. Crates spawn around the world, mostly around roads and monuments. Monuments are locations on the map of rust. There are places like military tunnels, airfields, launch sites, garages, and around these monuments, there'll be crates and barrels, both of which will give you items that you will need to continue your rust career. The looting mechanic of rust is very simple. You just open a crate, right click to drag items into your inventory instantly or manually drag them in yourself. And yeah, that's it. Different crates have different items in them. You have the normal crates, the military crates, the elite crate. That's about it for scavenging. Next. Next. 
this exists. Next. Electricity. Something that is not really needed in Rust. You don't really need to learn how to do it. But if you do it, I guess it's just for turrets that defend your base and lights. That's basically about it. You don't need electricity for anything else. You can have a fridge and not need electricity for the fridge somehow. The wiring of electrical compliances is actually pretty simple, but you have quite a lot of complex electrical components. You have the OR switch, the AND switches, the blockers, the electrical branches, the root combiners. You have a bunch of shit uh, that needs you to sort of experiment with. They also give you descriptions about what they do, so you can read from there, or you could just Google a guide. Overall, electricity is a plus, but not needed, so pretty fun. Next. Now, the NPC is something you encounter definitely throughout your Rust life. Some of them are pretty broken. By some of them, I mean all of them. They all have insane aim. They are also very aggressive, they will attack you on site if they see you and if you're close enough. Some of them can even 360 no-scope you, yeah, they basically have aimbot. Imagine this scenario, right? You have a mountain and you have a bridge. So the mountain is actually behind the bridge and it's above the bridge, right? If you come up behind that mountain and you peek down to see the bridge, he will be looking forward and he'll turn around and aim up and shoot you in the face. There are also patrol helicopters and Chinooks, um, both of which will shoot you on sight if they see you as well. Oh, I'm not having this. I'm oh, not having this. Next. Oh, death. In Rust, you will die many a times, most likely. Even if you're the best aimer even if you have the best spray control ever you will most likely still die from some random guy camping out in the random bushes out in the random mountain hilltop it is inevitable and in rust you have to just get used to it you cannot get salty but obviously that's easier said than done if you can get past the saltiness of dying repeatedly then you will still have a great time you can build your base probably get raided the next day and then start over again and i think that's one of the things that people complain about a lot especially a lot of the new people who come in and they just spawn die spawn die and they're like this is not fun how is this fun you just have to get past that first hurdle next vehicles for transportation i touched on it a little bit just now but there are horses and cars in the game there are also boats there's two types of boats there's the rhib boat which i've never seen before but i know it's in the game because i watched a video on it and there is the rowboat um, which spawns naturally around beaches there's also a kayak that you can craft you need a paddle to drive it vehicle wise there's a bunch of stuff that you can do with the customization there's armored cockpit seats uh, you can craft a better engine, you can craft fuel modules, uh, storage modules. So basically you have a starting platform. You have a starting platform and you craft things that you want to put on said pl platform. You craft modules. You put a barricaded cockpit module at the front, a engine at the back to protect it from being shot at, and then a storage module or fuel module at the back. Overall the vehicle driving is okay. I would say it's okay because I constantly play on servers with 200 ping, so when I drive, there's a, a delay when I turn left or right, but that's not your problem, that's my problem, so. Overall, vehicles are useful and very much needed in the game because I don't want to run from one side of the map to the other, die, and then have to run all the way back. It's pretty cancer and pretty long. Next. So. Random events. If you look down there, you can see a bunch of icons. Not all servers have this, but the one I was in had it. Basically, <clears throat> each icon is a different uh, event or monument. So for the oil rigs, you can see the first two icons. They are red, which means they are a hard event, but they're active and you can go and raid the oil rigs if you want. There is a 
the chopper that I was talking about. There's the Chinook. There's a tank. There's a airdrop that I'm currently looting on screen right now. The random events are pretty cool, but they're very dangerous because everyone knows that they're coming, especially the, the seasoned ones. But overall, I like the random events. I think they add uh, a twist not a twist. I think they add another element to the survival of Rust, whether you should go high risk, high reward and run for that airdrop or just lay low and just slowly make things yourself, st slowly craft things yourself. Next. Alrighty, nearing the end now, we're talking about monuments. Monuments is places on the map, as I said before. Monuments spawn crates and barrels that you can loot and scavenge from. Some monuments like the launch site, the airfields have puzzles ranging from different levels. So you have the green key card, the blue key card, and the red key card. I'm not gonna say much more, but basically you need them to gain access to a very good tier of loot. So green being the most basic tier, blue being the second tier, and red being the highest tier, and you'll most likely get some good shit from the red tier puzzles. They also don't make the monuments easy, especially the puzzles. Not the first two, the green and blue ones are fine, but the red ones are filled with so either soldiers or tanks, so be careful. But monuments are a good experience and you cannot fully appreciate Rust without beating all of these monuments. I've been to the large oil rig, the military tunnel, the airfield. They are really fun. They are one of the best parts about Rust. Next. Here we go. Last part. I split into two sections at the start but it's basically the same thing it's all it all falls under the category of raiding raiding is probably arguably the most fun part about rust it is also one of the hardest things to do in rust certain people avoid raiding completely certain people raid all the time when they're online like i mentioned before different walls different material have different health with different health comes difficulty in raiding. Some of the top dogs of the server will bring a bunch of C4, come to your base, blow it the hell up, take your shit, get the fuck out. While you're offline, by the way, offline raiding is a thing. So I'm gonna put another disclaimer here. If you've come to Rust looking for an easy experience, if you watch the Twitch streamers, their raids, their, their, their PVPs, don't expect true Rust to be like that. It will not be like that at all you will most likely be offline raided when you come back you're gonna lose all your shit you're gonna be dead and you're gonna be like fuck me and you're gonna have to do it all over again or you're gonna quit one or the other but if you truly want to get into rust you have to pick yourself up like i said before just pick yourself up do it all again probably get raided the next day but hey at least you learn something you know how to defend yourself now i think the raiding system of rust is very good the different materials needing different <clears throat> items to destroy different weaknesses different strengths also you can put traps in there you can put turrets in there so you won't be fully undefended if you're offline and it's arguably one of the most fun i had while playing a survival game i love raiding i think people get a big kick out of raiding someone they get that adrenaline pump in they get that feel good feeling which is totally opposite for if you get raided you feel terrible you feel like shit but it's a feeling that every new rust player has to overcome and once you overcome that feeling then you will truly be able to enjoy rust and yeah that's about it i hope you enjoyed my very lengthy and detailed rust review i hope it was informative if you do get the game, I hope you enjoy it. If you don't enjoy hardcore survival games, then this maybe this isn't for you. But if you still want to try it, go for it. I support you all the way. If you have any comments about my comments, you can leave it in the comments below. Huh? Uh, if you don't like the video, dislike feels bad. But yeah, shit happens. If you enjoyed though, do me a favor, hit the like button. And if you want to see more reviews in the future, hit the sub button. I'll see you in the next review. Hope 2021 is a better year. Ciao.